ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ was once giving a khutbah similar to this in which the congregation is in front of him. And it so happens that his grandchildren, Al Hassan and Al Hussein, they enter the masjid. And in the time of the Prophet, ﷺ, the clothes that would be made for the children wouldn't be made cut to exact specifications. The idea was that they grow so quickly that they would just buy something that would be a little bit longer that they could wear and they could just grow into that as time would go on. And so Al Hassan and Hussein they're wearing these bright red garments, these bright red thobes as children do wearing bright clothes. And because the garments are bigger than their size it happens that the thobe is pulling around their legs the garment is going past their ankles and being children that are running around they start stumbling on it and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is witnessing as he is talking to his ummah as he is giving his khutbah as he is reminding them of religious admonitions he sees his grandchildren out of the corner of his eye and they are laughing and they are tripping and they are standing back up and then they are tripping again and they're just continuing in this way playing in the masjid of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he sallallahu alaihi wasallam pauses his khutbah he walks up to them he picks them up he kisses them and he goes back to the pulpit a proud grandfather <coughs> holding his grandchildren al hasan al hussein who as we know are the leaders of the youth of paradise and he holds them and he says that Allah spoke the truth when he said innama amwalukum wa auladukum fitna surely your wealth and your children are a fitna are a trial and then he says i did not have the patience to wait until after the khutbah i had to in the moment go to them and kiss them and hold them and bring them here sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin and we have not sent you except as a mercy to mankind brothers and sisters in my life and in, in the lives of so many that are dealing with children with babies with toddlers with young children older children teenagers you can imagine that it opens up lessons of mercy and lessons of introspection for all of us and what i wanted to do this afternoon brothers and sisters is to reflect on some of these narrations specifically regarding stories wherein the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is interacting with babies and toddlers that still do not talk they may babble but they're not talking yet and so we see how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is talking about them interacting with them and the lessons that we take from them as well sallallahu alaihi wasallam any parent any grandparent can tell you just as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did that when he saw his children when he saw his grandchildren he couldn't help but go to them he couldn't help but fixate on them but what we learn about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that yes it could be a fitna a trial 
but it is something that can bring us closer to Allah if we interact with them properly, if we take lessons from them, whether they are children or not, and we use them as a means to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these could be our own children or they could be children in the community. There are lessons for all of them. The Prophet ﷺ was once standing, was once with his Sahaba. And it so happened that while he's with the Sahaba, there is a mom, a mother, rushing through the streets. And she's saying, my baby, my child. And she's looking for her child. And she finally finds this infant who is still very small, who still cannot survive without his mother's love, without his mother's nourishment. And the mom immediately picks him up and the first thing she does is she begins nursing him. She knows that's the way to comfort, to soothe the baby, to give it what it needed, what it was missing in the time that it was separated, that it was not with his mother. And the Prophet ﷺ said, do you see the mercy of this mother? They said, yes. They said, he said, uh, وسلم, that can you imagine this mother throwing her baby into the fire? Can you imagine that this mother would take a baby to an open flame and decide to toss it the way that she was running around frantically, the way she immediately began soothing it and nursing it? Do you think she would throw him into the fire? The Sahaba said, of course not, we cannot fathom such a thing. We cannot imagine something like that happening. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said something deep that all of us should reflect on. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, verily, Allah is more loving and more merciful to his servants than this mother is to his, her baby. We all know of stories of mothers doing miraculous things. Even in some reports, the adrenaline that they get when they see perhaps their children, their baby is about to get trampled, their adrenaline causes them to be able to stop trucks, to be able to stop vehicles, to stop any type of harm from getting to that child. We have seen mothers not only in, among humans, but among all of creation, among animals, sacrifice themselves just for their children. And the Prophet is reminding us that that love that is put in each mom that can't be away from their child, that would sacrifice themselves over and over for their children's happiness, Allah loves you and me more than that. SubhanAllah. And if a mother does not want to throw her baby in the fire, then why would Allah want to throw you and me in the fire? The mercy of Allah is all-encompassing. And we would have to be truly evil, truly disobedient, truly leaving the mercy of Allah just to be thrown in the fire. Meaning that we really deserve it in that case. And we ask Allah to perfect us from that. The concept of mercy is brought up around children because children at the end of the day are defenseless. And especially human babies compared to the rest of creation really need their parents. They wake up and they cannot feed themselves on their own. They cannot clean themselves on their own. They cannot walk on their own. Without their parents, they are nothing. There have even been studies done where children, and these studies aren't done anymore, but once upon a time where children were just given food directly through tubes or other mechanisms, and they were left to stay in cribs, and they were cleaned in a way that no human contact happened to them. All of those children in that study passed away, perished. And the findings concluded that children don't just need food, don't just need the basic amenities taken care of. They need love. They need care. They need mercy. The millions of mothers around the world, the millions of fathers around the world, they aren't taught mercy, they are given mercy by the most merciful. And the lessons for us are to act upon these natural impulses and to not let the culture around us dictate how we act with our kids. There are very cruel 
methods that are sometimes used with children. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was common that kissing children was frowned upon. It was looked down upon, especially if you are a man. A real man hides his emotions. He is not the one who busies himself with the children. He is not one that kisses the children. A man once came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu holding his grandchildren Al-Hassan al Hussein. they make an appearance again and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is kissing them. And he says, you kiss your children? By Allah, I have 10 children boasting about the number of children. I have 10 children and I have never kissed even one of them. The same way that someone might say that I had worked 10 years at the job and I never got a day sick. I never took a day off. In the same way, he's boasting that I have 10 children that I raised. And I've never kissed any of them. The Prophet ﷺ looks at him and he simply says that how can I help a man? In kana Allah naza'a min qulubikum ar-rahma that how can I help a man whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away his mercy from his heart subhanallah this is what the prophet sallallahu is teaching us that if we ourselves do not show rahma then how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us rahma in another narration another uh, of the bedouin came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they said that we hear that you kiss your children that you love your children. And it so happens that we ourselves never kiss our children. We ourselves never kiss our children. So what, you know, why do you do so? And they said that, and the Prophet responds and he says that, مَن لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ Whoever is not shown mercy, whoever does not show mercy, will not be shown mercy. These children that we have in our lives, brothers and sisters, are in amana, and sometimes we think that we can live our lives just the way that we were before. But the Prophet reminds us that our lives must fundamentally change when these children enter our lives. And that if we don't show them mercy, if we don't act upon what Allah has already given us naturally, then how do we think we're going to move forward as an Ummah? The Prophet ﷺ, his mercy was so much that even if he was leading Salah, the method of getting the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he heard a child crying, he would fasten the Salah. He would make, he would speed up the Salah. He would shorten the Salah. Out of mercy for that child. And not just for boys, for girls as well. The Prophet ﷺ with his granddaughter Zainab, it is said that when he would pray, he would hold her like this. And then when he would go in rukur, he would put her down. And in sujood, she would be down. And then again, when the Prophet would stand, he would take her. And when his grandsons would play on him, he وسلم, would sometimes stay in an elongated sajda. Would stay in a sajda for a long time, even when the Sahaba would wonder, is the Prophet okay? Is he still alive? Is everything okay up there and they would look and they would see the children playing and the Prophet ﷺ would later explain that I did not want to bother them in their playing. I did not want to give them any type of hardship or make them feel insignificant that here I am busy praying, your play isn't important. No, their play was important for them. And the Prophet ﷺ took it importantly. Brothers and sisters, when we look around at the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ, we can't help but wish to be more merciful ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ, he would be very easy going with children. He ﷺ, was once with some of the children and the babies would often be brought to him because he ﷺ, would have a blessed saliva. And so what they would do is the practice of tahniq of where he would wet a date, he would chew on it a little bit, the juice would come and he would rub that on the child's mouth, on the baby's mouth. And it so happened that one of the children once came and while on the Prophet ﷺ, he began to urinate on him, 
Children, you can't control when they use their bathroom. They, they don't have a schedule for these things, as parents can attest. He, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, does not get angry. He says, simply bring me some water, and he cleans it himself, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And from this, we get the rulings around a baby boy's urine being okay and, and more. But the lesson of mercy shouldn't be forgotten in addition to the fiqh. The lesson of mercy of the Prophet ﷺ did not lose his composure. He ﷺ continued. That is a lesson for all of us to take. The Prophet ﷺ was feeding another of the Ansar. And as he's feeding the, the Ansar, he's, he's doing the same act of tahniq. He's taking the date as well. And he sees that this young boy, Ibn Abi Talha, he is smacking his lips as he's taking this date. That he really is enjoying this little bit. A lot of times now, even if you go to the doctor's office before they give the baby shots or anything, they add a little bit of sugar to their pacifier, some sugar water. They put it in the baby's mouth just a little bit. And they start sucking harder so they get distracted. Similarly, in this case, this little baby who has not tasted anything but his mom's milk up to this point, is now given a little bit of a date, and he starts, he starts smacking his lips, he's clearly enjoying it. And he وسلم, smiles, and he says, the Ansar, they love their dates. He وسلم, was so attentive, commenting and praising the Ansar from this young baby. And he وسلم, would of course do that with older children as well, as in the famous story where there was that young boy, and it happened, and his name was Abu Umair, and he had a pet named Nughair. One day it happened that Abu Umair is playing, and that, that bird isn't seen. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asks, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ana al-Nughair? He asks, Oh Umair, what happened to Abu Nughair? What, what happened to Nughair? And there are so many lessons to take from this. But just for a second, think about this young boy has an inconsequential life in many eyes, in many people's respects. The Prophet ﷺ not only knows his name, he knows his pet's name, he knows how often they're together, and he notices that he's not there. And he وسلم, decides to take all of that knowledge and talk to this young boy and make him see, feel heard, to make him feel seen. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, if this is not a prophet of mercy, then who is? If we do not learn mercy from these lessons, then how will we? أقول قولي هذا وصفري ولكن السلام بسم الله فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to often be ridiculed. By the Quraysh, by the disbelievers. And one of the most hurtful things that he was called by one of the disbelievers, Al As, the father of who became the famous Sahabi, Amr bin Al As, he used to call the Prophet all sorts of names. He was known for his istihza, his mocking. And one of the things that he would call the Prophet is Al Abtar, the cut off one. For you see, as we know, brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ had many children, subhanAllah, all but one dying in his own lifetime. And that included all of his sons. All of these precious baby boys that he had, they passed away. And the ones that passed away in Mecca, they passed away very young. And so essentially in the Arab culture, if you did not have a son, then it was something that was very looked down upon. That you were just left with girls. But we as Muslims, we do not believe this. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that the prophets were all fathers of daughters, by and large. Yes, there were times when some sons were born, for example, uh, Ismail ﷺ, Ishaq ﷺ, Yahya ﷺ to Zakaria, and so on and so forth. But the fathers of daughters were prophets. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ would tell whenever daughters would be born. But he was called al abtar meaning the one whose line has been cut off. The one who won't be remembered. Because for them, sons meant legacy. Sons 
were the ones that would continue their family name. Sons would be the ones that would work with them, that would fight with them, that would build with them, that would do everything with them. And he وسلم, has these daughters that are entering other households and he has no sons. So he وسلم, would be called al aftar which was very hurtful. Something that you can't control if Allah SWT gives you children, sons and daughters, and then if he does, if they, if they live or not, it's all in Allah's hands. Why would you mock someone? Why would you ridicule? Why would you scorn someone for that? Allah SWT reveals Surah Al-Kawthar, Inna a'tayna al kawthar We have given you the special pool, the special river that's just for you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Work in the way of your Lord. Have patience. Keep your head down and work. Verily, you are not the one who is after. The one who is after is the one who used to call you that. Subhanallah, the two sons of Al As, Amr ibn Al As and Hisham ibn Al As, both became Muslim. This ardent person that a lot of the verses in the Quran that we read, this person who used to laugh at the Prophet. He did not get the last laugh. His own children became Muslim and left his way. And the Prophet said, he is the one who has been cut off. But later in the life of the Prophet after these young baby boys passed away in the Meccan period, when he is in Medina, Allah blesses him with one more boy, Ibrahim ibn Muhammad. Ibrahim was someone that was born very, very late in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He was someone that was born when the Prophet ﷺ was in his 60s. And he ﷺ had such a special, soft, sweet spot for him. This baby would live in the outskirts of Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ would take the time to go out to the outskirts of Medina, to where the baby was being nursed, and he would spend time with him. He would play with him, he would laugh with him. And he watched this baby get bigger and bigger. One day the news comes that Ibrahim is very sick. Ibrahim ibn Muhammad sallallahu is very sick. Come immediately. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rushes from the epicenter, from the center of the town, and he heads to the outskirts of Medina. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, enters. And the hadith says that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, goes, he kisses the baby, and then he smells him. A very specific narration mentioned on not just being in the room and telling them, be patient. No, he goes. And the human side of the Prophet ﷺ shows, when you're with children, you don't, just, you don't just talk to them. You come to them, you hold them, you smell them. The smell of an infant is unlike any other. And they said that Ibrahim, his, his breath is labored. His breath is difficult. You can tell these are his last breaths that he's taking. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, begins to cry. And the Sahaba begin to cry. Abdurrahman bin Awf, one of his closest companions, he says, Wa anta ya Rasulullah, and you too, O Rasulullah. One of the meanings that scholars take from this is he's asking, is this the way that we should grieve? Are we allowed to cry when someone is dying? Someone else saying, is, is it befitting to cry when someone is dying? Because you already know this is the qadi, you know this was already planned. If you know it's a fact, then why would you cry? But a, another meaning the scholars also say is that, you know, if you see your father or someone very strong, someone who's a rock in your life and they're crying, and they're the person that you take as strength and you say, you're crying? That, what do we do if you're crying? Meaning it's, it's also from a place of deep love. Wa anta ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet looks at him and responds and he says, Ya ibn Awf, innaha rahmah. O son of Awf, this is mercy. These tears that are coming down, this is mercy. Allah SWT teaches us 
that he has a hundred shares of mercy. He has all of the mercy. And only one percent, one share of that hundred, one percent was given to all of us. All of the love and care and mercy and tenderness that we show to each other is divided amongst that one percent. Ninety-nine percent is still with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so those feelings of crying, they're not just from our human hearts. They're not just because we feel something. No, it is directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That feeling of rahmah, that feeling that you can't control yourself. That if you see a child in pain, if you see a child not doing well, the parents, the grandparents, the cousins, then everyone will begin crying. Everyone will feel bad for that baby. So the Prophet ﷺ, as he's watching his young baby, and subhanAllah, the age of Ibrahim, he wasn't just, you know, some may mistakenly believe he was just a newborn, just a one month, two months, three months, or four months, as I'm holding. He, radiallahu anhu, was between 16 to 18 months old, subhanAllah. He was a year and a half, about to become two years. SubhanAllah, it's at that age that they're no longer just in your arms. No, at this stage, they've learned to crawl, they've learned to walk, they're potentially running at this stage, they have a personality, they're talking a little bit, they're communicating with you, they are laughing, they're crying, they, they have their own lives, they have their own personalities. And it's amongst the most precious time. That first two years, especially that last bit where now they can kind of take care of themselves a little bit, but they still love you, you're still their entire world. He وسلم, is holding this 16 month old baby. A baby that is still being nursed. And as Ibrahim, this little baby is taking his final breaths, the Prophet continues to cry after telling Abdul Rahman bin Awf, that this is rahmah, this is mercy. And he says, In the line of Tadma, while Palba Yasin, Walla Napolo illa ma yalda rabbana, Wa inna bifira tika ya Ibrahim ul Mahzun. The eyes shed tears, and the heart is sad, is grieved. But we do not say anything except what Allah SWT is happy with. Showing his composure, his control, even in that moment. And then he talks to Ibrahim directly. He's talking to his son. And he says, and Ibrahim, we are so sad at your departure. We are so sad as you are leaving. It was on that day that there was an eclipse where everything became dark. And many began to attribute this to the death of Ibrahim, this super sad moment that was taking place, this tremendously sad thing that was happening. And he, وسلم, even in the midst of his grief, he could have easily attributed that to himself. Anyone would have. Any fake prophet would have. But he وسلم, says that no, the sun and moon do not eclipse for anyone. This is by the will of Allah. And when you see this, pray. He وسلم, was very clear. You see that even in these moments of difficulty, we learn from our Prophet Sallallahu that this mercy should not make us violate the rules of the most merciful. We do not say anything bad, we do not attribute anything incorrectly, and we continue to pray and be on the right path. But you can imagine how tough that was for the Prophet Sallallahu to share in that moment. That he's focused on this little baby of his, that last son that he had, and of course we know that it was not as a punishment to the Prophet Sallallahu but rather it was a way of ensuring that this Ummah continued to be on the ideals of Prophet Sallallahu and didn't treat his sons as the ones that were to lead the Ummah afterwards. It was done out of divine wisdom. There's always a better reason for it. But you can imagine how tough it was for Prophet Sallallahu As the Prophet Sallallahu is leaving, he's saying, Ibrahim is in Jannah and I see he has a wet nurse with him. I see that someone is nursing him in Jannah. This young baby that yet wasn't eating anything else, yet was nursing, he is still talking about his baby boy. 
And he said, I see him feeding in paradise. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu we often look at him as the commander, the general, the leader, the one who, who was tasked with bringing the Dawah to the whole world. And that was all true. But he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never lost his mercy. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, always paid attention to everyone, whether it be children or anyone that others would let go of. I've been talking about children this whole time, but he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would often combine talking about children and the elderly, two groups that would often not be taken care of. Once there was an elderly man that came to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a question, and it so happened that as the elderly man is looking for a place to sit, everything's taken, and no one really wants to get up. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says that he who does not show mercy to the young and does not respect the elder, he is not among us. And so, brothers and sisters, the lessons for us to take from this is no matter how busy we are, no matter how much we think is happening in our lives, do not neglect the children, do not neglect your youth. For Allah SWT did not neglect them, the Prophet ﷺ did not neglect them, and we should also not neglect them. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatun wa fil akhirati hasanatun wa qina'adha bin nar. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'did hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab wa aqimis salah.